Hello, welcome to this e-learning module brought to you by the European Coastal Flood Awareness System Project. My name is Vera Gastal and I hold a remote sensing position here at CLS in France. Today, I will walk you through the ECFAS mapping products and demonstration cases. This module is structured in four different sections. In the first section, we will present a little about the objectives and context of the mapping products. In the second, how and why demonstration cases were selected. In the third, we will describe the geospatial datasets format. And in the last, we will explain the different types of cryptographic products, how they are structured and created. The objectives of the mapping products are the following. First, to provide a set of geospatial layers over a selection of past events and locations using the algorithms and tools developed during the ECFAS project. This includes the total water levels handcast and forecast, the triggering thresholds for coastal flooding, the flood and impact modeling, and the satellite-based automatic extraction of shorelines. As you can see in the figure below, the mapping products benefit from most of the tools and concepts developed within the ECFAS project. The second objective is to highlight the content and the potential of these datasets by defining how to represent and integrate them into cartographic products. This also contributes to understanding what is the added value of the ECFAS products and how they can contribute to the evolution of the Copernicus Emergency Management Service. A short introduction to the Copernicus Emergency Management Service. Um, it is provided by the European Commission and it aims to support disaster management operations and actors by providing geospatial information. The service is free of charge and operational since 2012. It includes two major components, the early warning and monitoring systems with the European Forest Fire Information System, the European and Global Drought Observatory, and the European and Global Flood Awareness Systems, and also the on-demand mapping component with its rapid mapping service focused on emergency response and the risk and recovery mapping that addresses the other phases of disaster crisis management. A third component was recently introduced, the exposure mapping component that provides population grids and built up surfaces datasets. The need for demonstration cases within ECFAS comes from the occurrence of coastal flood in Europe and the possibility that there could be no coastal event during the project time span. When we talk about demonstration cases, we are talking about one precise event happening at one precise location. Demonstration cases are also the perfect exercise to showcase how the ECFAS system would work and what information it would provide. The use of past events for this also allows to pick well-known events that are documented and easy to compare with the ECFAS products. The selection process consisted in the evaluation of a list of more or less 30 past and current events and locations using the following criteria. Total water level, flood and impact products are available or computable. Satellite images to support uh, automatic shoreline extractions are available. The existence of a CMS activation, or at least the existence of a person satellite imagery to compare the ECFAS products with satellite-based flood and impact mapping. And finally, geographic location. The selected demonstration cases are Gloria Storm that hit the Mediterranean coasts in January 2020 with three different locations in Spain. Uh, we have Girona, Ebro Delta, and Castellón that have the advantage of fulfilling all the selection criteria. Xintia storm at La Faute sur Mer that occurred on the French Atlantic coast during February 2010 
And last, we have the Eunice storm that affected Dutch North Sea coast around The Hague in February 2022. All geospatial datasets are produced using the algorithms developed in AgFast. Their formats are standardized and answer to the needs of the coastal and disaster management communities. Um, here you have a short description of uh, what type of data set you will find and what formats. Uh, GeoJSON is a type of vectorial data set widely used by GIS users and in web applications. Uh, NetCDF is a grid information and a popular format in the fields of uh, climatology, oceanography, or meteorology. A raster is an image that represents information in a two dimensions gridded format, and a shapefile is another type of vectorial data set. It's probably more specific to JS applications and softwares. All data sets that were produced for the demonstration cases can be visualized and downloaded through the AgFast platform. Here you have the example of the impact mapping of the Gloria Elbro Delta case. Uh, for example, you can see the uh, impact on agriculture and ecosystems or uh, impact on roads here displayed. The template design is aligned with cartographic best practices. It includes different sections, um, a title section with the name of the past event, the location of the analysis, and the simulated date for the reanalysis. An overview map providing location of the demonstration case at European level, and the main map frame that presents the geospatial products. There is also a dedicated section to the demonstration case with uh, the event information and uh, the mapping product description here on the left, as well as the legend of the main map frame. The map integrates a statistical summary of the impact and flood data sets for better understanding of, for better understanding of the product and a graphic representation of the total water level time series. Uh, last, some utility sections at the bottom of the map provide more information about ECFAS project, cartographic information, and sources of the data sets used in the background. Here we have a presentation of uh, a few examples of products that we have designed for ECFAS. So the rapid event mapping, uh, this type of event overview is meant to showcase the results of the warning algorithms and provide an example of how ECFAS can support and improve already existing products. As an operational early warning system, ECFAS, once activated by a total water level forecast above the triggering threshold, will deliver the same geospatial datasets to its users. These can be used to support early disaster management activities, but also be used directly into CMS activations as it provides a flood extent and impact localizations. For example, it can trigger satellite acquisitions, pre-tasking activities, or it can support the definition of the area of interest of an activation, or it can com provide complementary information to assist satellite-based flood and impact mapping. This type of overview map can also be integrated into communication formats and reports. The creation of this map requires very limited GIS manipulations of the output datasets. They have only been clipped, been clipped to the extent of the area of interest to facilitate the manipulation and compute correct statistics. Their representation mostly uses a, a classified symbology, which means that all the features in the layer are displayed in a color that represents a group of similar values or a range of closed values. 
As you can see, it can be gradual with classes representing increasing levels of the same parameter. This is an example of mapping product created for the Zintia demonstration case with the Yakvas products produced in the conditions of an early warning system just before the storm. The shoreline displacement mapping product is a different example of the potential of the ECFAS datasets. This is based on on-demand automated extraction of shorelines from satellite images. It describes the distance and direction of the shoreline displacement between two satellite acquisitions. This type of product can be used to monitor post-storm beach evolution and recovery but it can also be used at longer intervals to understand other trends. This mapping product is meant as a standalone product that is directly integrable into CMS risk and recovery standard service to complement the existing product's portfolio with a dedicated coastal surveillance product. It requires to use two satellite images that were acquired during similar total water levels condition to ensure an optimal measure of the displacement. Once the shorelines are extracted from both images, a series of regular transects are used to calculate the distance between both shorelines and the direction of the displacement. Once again, the symbology used is a classified one. This is an example of the shoreline displacement mapping product for the Ebro Delta demonstration case using Copernicus Sentinel-2 satellite images. Finally, I would like to point out that you can find more information about the concepts of each individual ECFAS product that were used during this module in a number of other ECFAS e-learning modules. Um, so we have introduction to site and coastal extraction, thresholds of total water levels for triggering coastal flooding, forecasting and hand casting in flood management, flood modeling and pan-European flood maps catalog, and impact modeling. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, this is the end of this module. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us through the email that is displayed on this slide. Thank you very much and goodbye.